It's not just a fad. In fact, there are some very important reasons why we should declutter. And I would like to give you at least five of those reasons today. Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to my channel. And thank you so much for being here today. Now, this video is not about decluttering or how to declutter or tips on how to declutter. I almost hate to use that word declutter because it gets thrown around so much. What I'm talking about why we should maybe let go of some things because it is so important that we get organized and stay safe in our homes. So that's what I want to talk about today. As much as we don't like to think about it, there will come a day when we will be gone. We'll no longer be on this earth. And the older we get, the shorter that time becomes. And I think we need to prepare for that in a lot of different ways. So let me state reason number one why it is so very important to declutter and organize. So the first reason is responsibility. I think we all have a responsibility to take care of our own stuff to purge some things, donate some things, however you want to do it. It should not be someone else's responsibility to do that. They shouldn't have to make the decisions on how to get rid of your stuff. Uh, that's my opinion. You may not feel that way. But I know, like with my ma, when we had to get rid of her stuff, it was just heart-wrenching. And the guilt that you carry for so long is just such a heavy burden. My mother never got rid of anything, and she loved all her stuff. Everything had meaning to her. And because of that, with everything I picked up, I thought, oh my, she loved this. How can I just give it to Goodwill or discard it? But yet, I couldn't keep all that stuff. Neither could my brother or sister, nor were we interested in any of it. So we bore the burden of discarding all her stuff, all the things that meant so much to her that she had kept and saved for years and years. And that was very hard on all of us. Number two, stay in control of your own choices. Right now, while we're still of sound mind and hopefully healthy and mobile, now is the time that we can decide and do a lot of it ourselves. If you need assistance, that's fine. Ask a family member, a grandchild, a friend. But I want to make my own choices of where my stuff goes. I want to decide, you know, take this to Goodwill or I want my daughter-in-law to have this if, if she would like to have it. I'd like to give my china to whoever. And I want to start doing that now to get it out of my house. And I want to be in charge of that. I don't want somebody making those decisions for me. If any of us, for whatever reason, and it could happen any day, if we end up in a nursing home or an assisted living or something, there's no time for us to make those choices. 
So we're just going to get what we get. That's it. You can't take much with you. And I want to make those decisions and choices now so that it's not taken out of my hands and someone else makes those decisions for me. When my ma fell and ended up in a nursing home, they said she could never go home again and live alone. Now, if she had a spouse or if one of her kids could have moved in with her, then she could have gone home. Other than that, she had to go to a nursing home. And that's exactly what happened. So she didn't get to make any choices about anything at all. Number three, rid yourself of unnecessary stress. Having a lot of stuff really does cause stress and it contributes to our mental health, to our anxiety levels. Why do we want to put ourselves through that? We're at a time in our lives when we should be enjoying our lives. And we don't need to be living under such burdens of all the stress that's created because of all the chaos that's in our homes. That just doesn't even make sense. We don't want to live in the past with the things that we've accumulated over 50 years or so. And we certainly can't live in the future. We need to live in the present. And we want to make our lives as carefree, simple as we can. Number four, safety and falls. The more stuff we have in our house, the greater the chances are that we are going to fall. And as I stated earlier, that is exactly what happened to my ma. Now she had stuff everywhere. Oh, so many knickknacks and little end tables and figurines and tall vases that sat on the floor and just everything. She loved her scatter rugs. She had scatter rugs everywhere in front of the kitchen sink and in the bathroom and in the hallway and just everywhere. And it wasn't those kind that gripped to the floor. So you could step on one and just go flying. And even though you may love those things, sometimes we have to really take a look at it and be prepared and decide, could this be a hazard for me? Am I unsafe with this? Maybe we could still get throw rugs, but a different style with a low profile that cling to the floor. That's something to think about. But safety is very important in your home. And number five is peace and calm. Isn't it time that we simplify our lives to be calm and live peaceably and improve the quality of our lives the best that we can? I really think it is. You know, when I was younger, I've said this before, I had a lot of stuff and I loved it. Every little knickknack and pictures on the walls and oh my gosh, all kinds of stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I was young, I had energy, I could keep up with it, I could keep it cleaned, etc. Now here I am 30, 40 years later, I can't keep up with all that kind of stuff. And it, it can make you nervous and anxious when you think about all the stuff that you have all around you. You know, sometimes when you go to bed at night, you lay there and you think about all the things you need to do and get done. Do you ever have the thought, oh my gosh, I really have got to do something because if I got sick tomorrow or 
fell or something happened, my opportunity is gone. And then it just works on your nerves and it becomes so overwhelming that you just feel paralyzed. It doesn't have to be that way. As I stated before in some other video, start small and just keep continuing on. First, get rid of garbage. I mean, stuff that definitely has to go to the trash. That's it. You know, you cannot organize until you declutter. I made that mistake years ago too. Oh my gosh, I went out and bought all these organizational bins and drawer dividers and all that stuff to store everything. All I did was take all that junk, extra stuff that I wasn't using at all. And instead of it just being in different places all over the house, it was in different containers sitting in the garage in case I might need it. And I never did need it. So we have to get rid of some things before we can get organized. And then once you're organized, you're no longer frustrated thinking, now I know I had that hairbrush or I had this or that, but I can't find it. You'll know exactly where it is. That's a good feeling. If you go out somewhere just to enjoy the day or to spend time with your children or your grandchildren, you're not gonna have in the back of your mind something needling at you like, oh my gosh, I should be home. I should be home and start to make a dent in this whole process. You're gonna be free. You're gonna be calm. You're gonna enjoy, truly enjoy and be present with the people you are with. That's really valuable also. So I hope you enjoyed these five reasons why you might want to declutter and get your things organized and in order. And if you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comment section. We can all help each other. Many people struggle with all of this. When they get to a certain age, they know they need to do it, but it they just don't know where to start. And then it just gets put off and put off. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't let age stop you. Don't let anything stop you. If you still have your faculties and you can move around just a little, start somewhere. Well, now I'm going to leave you with an inside beauty tip. My inside beauty tip today comes from Proverbs 27.9. Sweet friendships refresh the soul and awaken our hearts with joy. For good friends are like the anointing oil that yields the fragrant incense of God's presence. In many friendships, what makes for a really sweet friendship is heartfelt advice. And I believe true friends try to help each other and maybe give advice to each other. I don't want to push anything on anyone or make anyone feel bad. You know, you'll come to the time that you need to do what you need to do. This is just some heartfelt advice that I felt it was important to share with you all, my sweet, dear friends. I wouldn't have known any of this to the depth and the level that I do if I hadn't already gone through it. And I went through it with my ma. So because of that experience that I had, it taught me so many valuable lessons. It taught me what I wanted to do in my home 
and it taught me what I didn't want to do, what I didn't want in my life, what I didn't want to do to my children. My mother never meant to dump this on me. I guess she just thought she would be here forever. I don't know. <laughs> but she evidently never even gave it a thought. And it would break her heart if she felt like we were left making all those decisions and carrying all that responsibility. So it was not intentional. It just happened because her time ran out. None of us know when our time is gonna run out. But please just take this advice, this video, in the way that it is intended. And that's just to give you food for thought, to help you, and hopefully you can help me in return through what you advise in your comments. I am so grateful for each and every one of you and the loving friendship that we have. And I thank you. Well, until we meet again, this is the old girl signing out. See ya.